So Johnson & Johnson has been involved in innovation for a long time. Uh, our company is founded on being very innovative. Uh, more recently, we've launched an innovation initiative, which is opening innovation centers across the world to make it easier for us as a very large corporation, one of the largest healthcare corporations in the world, to be approachable by entrepreneurs. Well, we are the Boston Innovation Center. We happen to be located in Cambridge, and really we're responsible in our location for interacting with innovators on the eastern half of North America. The teams inside the Innovation Center are comprised from a very diverse set of uh, expertises. So we have people who are here from the individual businesses of J&J who bring with us very specific understandings of the kinds of areas that we're trying to invest very heavily in. Experts in neuroscience, experts in cardiovascular metabolism, experts in oncology, cancer research. And then we have people in innovation centers who are here to, from a legal perspective, from a finance perspective, to help rapidly move through talking about projects to actually putting in place the relationships and or investments that are needed to support the advance of those products. You know, so some of the examples of companies that we've most recently already begun to work with are Vedanta, which is a company, for example, that was thought to be very interesting from our immunology business unit. Another company that we've recently invested in is a company called Rodan, which is a, a company focused on neurological disorders. Another very interesting partnership we've done recently is with a not-for-profit here in Massachusetts called Lab Central. Lab Central will be opening an open innovation incubator space. You know, what we hope to start every uh, relationship with is just a very uh, interactive conversation. And so we don't come to it with a preconceived notion of how best we might collaborate. We try to, in a very open-ended kind of way, explore that together and see what type of relationship would be the most effective one for us to enter into. We are in the Imagine If Cafe. And First Thursdays are an opportunity for entrepreneurs to come and essentially come and sit down with us and have lunch. And so we have in our cafe recurring lunches where uh, researchers come in and we just sit around the table and talk about what they're doing and how we might be able to help. So again, it always starts with imagine if we could, sort of dot, 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 and then we fill that in with a conversation around lunch. And one of the phrases we use a lot is converting the complex into the simple. So we ask ourselves often, is what we're doing reducing in some important way something that was otherwise quite a complicated thing to deal with, perhaps a medical problem, into something that's much easier, much more manageable, hopefully faster, hopefully more affordable. So that's an algorithm that we think a bit about quite a bit. You know, and so we move through the opportunities trying to understand what is it about these discoveries that now allow us to see medicine in a new way, a simpler way, a way in which hopefully would make a tremendous difference in the lives of patients. Well, for me, it's so remarkably um, wonderful to be able to participate with people who are passionate about solving difficult medical problems. It's a tremendous opportunity uh, I have every day to both work with them and to hope in some small way facilitate you know, the progress of medical innovation into things that can make a difference for people all over the world. At the end of every quarter, depending upon who's done the most remarkably interesting collaboration, uh, Mankini travels to the Innovation Center to sort of live there for the next quarter. 